Hey, this is Joe over at Jam Sound Studio. Um, I want to show you today how to get a, uh, a perfect drum sound in the, I guess, the rock metal genre. Um, I guess I'll let you listen to the drums by themselves first. Let me turn off all these plugins. Um, I already got a pretty good drum sound in this song, so I'm just going to play the passage for you dry with no effects, no EQs, no compression, no nothing. So here's the drums um, raw. Uh, so pretty much, you know, um, they sound like drums, which is good. So I did a good job in that department. Um, the only problem, uh, there's no enhancement. Uh, they sound kind of dry. And uh, I have a small room to record in, so uh, they're not very ambient. There's not a whole lot of reverb. Well, first off, how we uh, we fix the, the the attack of the drums, um, I use a little plug-in on the, uh, the kick and snare, for instance, um, called Drumagog, which is a hit replacement. And uh, what I did was I sampled, I took a sample of the bass drum when the drummer was over, and uh, we recorded, I don't know, eight, 10, maybe 12 samples. Uh, in this track, I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight samples. So um, I took eight different hits. So uh, every time the drummer attacks the kick or the snare, it triggers a sample that was already previously recorded. This way, there's no background noise. It's a nice, tight kick, and every kick is a, as intense as the next. So uh, here's the before, and uh, I'll turn it on so you can hear the after. Now, of course, you can adjust the sensitivity. Um, you can also adjust the mix. You have control over that entire drum track. Um, I like to keep it, you know, mixed well so you can hear the real kick, but at the same time you get the attack of the hit replacement. So uh, what we do, we do the same thing for the snare. Let me pull up the snare one. And now we got a little bit of a, a little bit of ring in the recorded version. But uh, it does blend nicely with the um, the hit replacement, so uh, I can keep that blended at, at you know at sixty percent. I can make it less or more. Um, where it's at is fine for now. But um, next we will EQ the kick drum, and you can hear what that sounds like before and after. Now that just sounds powerful and thick and it's awesome. So uh, basically I just dipped everything at, at 350 hertz. Uh, that's where that box-like sound comes from. So I dipped there, I boosted around 60 hertz, and I also boost, boosted around 8,000 uh, kilohertz to, uh, to get that attack. And then uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll EQ the snare. And then we'll turn on the compression. And that gives us a nice tight snare and a kick. Um, now for the rest of the drums. Um, as far as the, uh, the kick, I have two kicks and I have two snares. So now these are, this is my outer kick drum and this is my uh, snare underneath the, uh, the snare itself. And you can hear what those sound like dry. And uh, what we'll do is we'll EQ again, basically in the same fashion, dipping that boxy sound out of the uh, the kick drum and adding compression, and then uh, compressing the snares underneath the snare. And now when we mix in our our uh, original drums, the the inside kick and the uh, top snare. 
we'll get a nice uh, well-rounded natural sound out of the drum even though it's mixed with that hit replacement so uh, next we'll do our overheads we pan one hard left pan the other hard right and uh, as far as overheads I like to uh, to roll off around 625 I don't know between 500 and 600 uh, Hertz so it makes room for the uh, higher frequencies uh, where the crash symbols and the ride symbols will exist so I'll show you the compression for them I usually compress uh, have like a 20 20 millisecond attack with a 20 millisecond release and uh, 6 to 1 ratio with a, a pretty soft me So uh, next will be the uh, the room mic, which is an omnidirectional mic. It picks up everything in the room, and uh, you can hear what that sounds like raw. Now uh, to mix that in, again we're going to dip that around that 350 hertz range because it that boxy sound exists. So we want to get rid of that. And then with the room, we, we'll compress the ha on that. So we'll uh, we'll have a pretty hard threshold with a soft knee and uh, bring that attack down around 20 and, uh, you know, release a uh, pretty fairly quick release around 20. Same as the, uh, the overheads. And, of course, you can uh, adjust these to your liking. So we're uh, we're getting closer to our uh, our finished product. Um, as far as the hi hat goes, uh, I like to roll off most of what exists in the hi hat area. Now there's no hi hat during this segment, but um, basically, if you cut everything out below like I don't know, seven thousand, eight thousand kilohertz, uh, really you just want that that high frequency of the of the hi hat just to cut through in the mix. Everything else below that area is, isn't even important in the mix because it's being picked up by the overheads. So, um, you know, you can experiment again with that on your own, and but that's what I usually do. I cut out everything below that, that frequency range. Um, and then we'll mix in the toms. I'll play those the toms by themselves for now so you can hear what they sound like. Now the way we get rid of all that background noise is uh, adding a gate to each track. Now you'll hear how much of the background noise actually got cut out of the mix. Um, next we'll EQ our toms and compress our toms much in the same fashion as the kick. Um, dipping it at 350, you can also boost in the highs and lows to enhance them. And uh, we'll just boost a little bit in the bottom end on the uh, the floor tom. And boost a little bit in the highs to add that attack. So uh, there's our drums, and uh, let's hear them all together. So next, um, what I do is I bus all of my drums. Uh, so this is bus one and two into uh, auxiliary one and two. So every drum is bussed to auxiliary one and two. And then I have um, my main drums, the, the kicks, the snares, and the toms bust to a second auxiliary track. And I call that my attack track. So uh, I have con complete control over the amount of attack that goes into every drum. So you can hear uh, 
put the attack off and then I'll turn it on halfway through. So it just adds a little bit more of a, an enhancement. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, it does add a lot of enhancement. Uh, it just cuts through the mix a lot better with the uh, with the other instruments. And then the last, uh, the last piece of the puzzle is the reverb. Now because I record in a small room, I really don't have a, uh, a lot of reverb to mess with. So of course I have to add reverb in a plug-in format. And uh, I generally use uh, an impulse response reverb. Um, which is reverb taken from real places. So uh, it sounds basically as, as natural as possible. So uh, here it is with the reverb on. Now you'll hear a huge, huge difference. Now that just really enhanced everything. Uh, makes everything sound so much more natural and then uh, you can also add extra reverbs I, I added a uh, another reverb just on the snare itself so I bust uh, right here I made a bus uh, 7 and 8 into auxiliary 7 and 8 and I added a, uh, a secondary room reverb and you can do this for toms snares kicks whatever you want but uh, just for an example here it is just on the, the snare So there you have it. There's uh, how you get the perfect drum mix using uh, EQ compression and uh, auxiliary tracks to uh, enhance your drum mixes. So good luck and uh, thanks for watching.